Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mike White with Baby Monkey Studios again. I'm coming back to you with another tutorial. This time, we're going to talk about additional product availability status. Now, that's not really the subject of this. Basically, uh, what this gentleman or, or lady is, is asking is that we want to um, have a call for details status. You know, like a product in Xcart that you know isn't hidden and available for sale but it's got call for details and I'm gonna actually steer them away from this you know solution I wouldn't really mess with the product status uh, but what we want to do is probably just add a checkbox now this is why I'm making a tutorial on this this is going to be very helpful for anybody that wants to add custom you know logic to anything on the product page and it's gonna walk you all the way through you know dealing with the database and dealing with the PHP and then finally like the template changes that would be needed to be made um, and I really think that a lot of you are going to see how you could use this in just hundreds of different ways uh, you know to make any kind of custom function that you want to happen on the product page so let's get started so here we are on the X cart back side and we're going to go to a product page and I'm just going to show you what we're going to affect first we're just going to add something way down here at the bottom, uh, like, you know, call for details. You see I've added some other stuff here that you probably don't have, um, just testing different things. But we're going to add a call for details and a checkbox. Okay, so we need to find the template to edit. And we're going to go to edit templates. And we're going to look in the common files directory first, because I'll show you what I would do here. You know, I'm using a custom skin on this website, and um, so I would actually go over here to the Common Files folder, and then I would go to the Product Details Template. Oh, I'm sorry, Main Common Files, then Main, then Product Details, and I would just, you know, Control A, Control C, copy this whole template, okay? Because before I edit it, I'd rather edit it in my skin file. And I've actually already edited this particular template, so I've got that template right here. But if I didn't, you know, I would just type here and tell them, you know, create this, this new file name, create, create it in my skin. <clears throat> and again, we're in my skin slash main. So we're not controlling the product details template that the customer sees. We're controlling the template that the, for the admin side. But since I've already got the template made, I'm going to go ahead and just click through to it. Okay, so we're going to scroll right down here to the bottom, which is where you'd expect it to be. We want to go to the bottom of the list here. And, and I'm just going to copy the Apply Global Discounts code. I noticed that was a checkbox. And it looks like it's right here. Okay. So I'm just going to copy from TR to TR. We want to make a new row in this table. And I'm going to go down here before the table ends. And I'm going to put it right here. No, I'm going to put it up here. Sorry about that. I'm going to put it right here because this last TR, it looks like it's the buttons. You can see the buttons right there. So I'm just going to put this copied piece row right here. Okay, and now we're going to edit this. And so this first part of the code has to do with, you know, when you're editing multiple files. So all we really have to do is just make sure this is a, a unique uh, name that we're going to name here. This is this, you know, this field that we're creating. This input is is going to be uh, call for details. Okay, and lang label apply global discounts. That's not going to work for us. Let's just put call for details. And right down here, if product that product ID equals nothing. Oh, first we need to change. This is the checkbox. Let's name the checkbox. Call for details. Okay. If product that product ID equals nothing, or dollar product dot discount available now. Call for details. So if it's nothing, checked equals checked. No, if I want it to not be checked. So it's just going to be if, see this would, this if statement would say, you know, if 
it's a new product, like product ID equals nothing. Or, you know, product that call for details. Well, I just want it to always be if dollar product that call for details equals y checked equals checked. So when a new product loads, this won't be checked. But if we check it and save it, well then this this will evaluate to true and it will be checked. Okay. And we just created this label call for details. Now, you know, you don't have to do this. You could just back this off and type the words call for details. But I think we should, you know, stick with Xcart's design and create um, a language variable for that. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And just so that I don't forget, I'm going to go over here to my languages tab and the English language. And I'm going to apply a filter for label call for details just to see if that's used. I didn't think it was. And we'll just put call for our details. And okay. So now let's go see what effect this has had on our product page. Let's refresh this. Okay. And right down here we have a box, call for details. And we check it and we hit apply changes. And it is still unchecked. Because there's no place to store this. And we also haven't edited the PHP scripts to store it. Okay. So first, before we, we make the PHP to store it, let's go ahead and give it a place to be stored in the database. I'm going to go ahead and access my control panel of the website and get into PHP my admin. Okay, and my test white website here is on an older kind of plus control panel. And I'm just going to go to databases and then the training database that I'm using here. And I'm going to go to my DB web admin. Okay, and I have a you know, fairly old now version of PHP my admin. Yours might look different than this. And I'm going to look for the products table. So here we have the Xcart products table right here. And you can see there's here's all the different um, you know fields that you can store for a product. And we're just going to add one. So you know we're going to add one field at end of table after product ID. Okay, well, no, not after product ID. You can change that. So one field at end of table. Sorry about that. Okay, and so our field is going to be call for details. And it is of type char. We actually might need to look back at that. You know, I'm, I'm not going to... Yeah, we'll make this char. And this length is 1. We're just going to store wire not yet in. Um... I guess it could default to N. And that's all we need, so we'll save. And you'll see now there's this little call for details. And you can see I've got another one right above there. I like to do this, obviously. So we're done with that. We'll go ahead and leave the plus panel. And I'm going to just look back at our code here that we just added and just make, yeah, value equals y. So, you know, if the equals y, it's checked. Well, we just set it to default to n. And it only needs to store one character. That's why I just, you know, chose char. It's just uh, an alpha character. And um, its value is going to be y if we want it to do it. So now what we need to do is edit the PHP that runs this page or runs this product page and um, get it to store the value in the database. Because even though we've created that, you know, if we check this box and hit apply changes, it's still not going to do anything. We actually have to get in and edit the, the code uh, that, that drives this page. So let's work on that next. So now I've just connected to my site with FileZilla. And I'm going to go to the folder that, the, you know, contains the website. And um, over here I'm in my changelog folder for this website and I like to keep a, a, a changelog folder um, you know it just lets me know the you know what PHP files I've actually changed on the site and I'm creating a directory in my changelog called admin so that I mirror the structure of the site and we go into the admin and I believe it's product modify.php let's pull that down so I'm going to get a fresh copy of that downloaded here Okay, so that we can start editing it. And 
let me pull that up. And I am using um, Notepad++. That's my my favorite little editor here. Really kind of helps me identify the code quite easily. All right, and so now we're going to look for. Oh, <laughs> and I've made a very rookie mistake. Uh, product modify.php just pulls in include slash product modify.php, and it really doesn't have much code at all involved with it, so I got the wrong file. No problem. Let's just go in here and create an include directory. It's kind of embarrassing. And we'll come up here and we'll go to the include directory and we'll pull open product modify.php. All right. And now we should be able to have the right file. Great. All right. Now we're going to look through this file and, you know, I may cut this short later, but I'm basically just paging through and I'm looking for those variables getting added to the database. Ah, here we go. So here we have query data equals array. And you know, we can read through all this code, but basically right here I got a note, update product data. And here's the query data equals array, and here's all the different variables. Um, and you can see this is the last one I edited. I'm just going to copy and paste it because this is going to be call for details. All right. And I like to keep the spacing nice if possible. And then, you know, it's just going to be dollar call for details. Now, if you don't understand, um, you know, that's a, how forms work. That's a, uh, you know, it, that's automatically getting assigned because we're posting you know that form from that page uh, so dollar sign call for details that variable is initialized automatically because it's in that form we have put that checkbox in there okay um, alright and I'm gonna you know just leave a note there that I edited this you know with this little slash slash back here just lets us know that you know I changed this and I search for that word whenever I'm looking for my changes you know baby edit okay so we hit save and we'll put this back on the server. I usually like to go ahead and make a back file at this point. You know, let's just name this to back. This is a test server. I'm just kind of showing you good practice. And we'll upload that up there. So now our changes should be on the server. Okay, let's go back to the website. I got that somewhere here. And I'm just going to refresh for good measure. Check the box, apply changes. Now, I did this intentionally. We have access denied, attempt to write data to a missing field of the table. I cannot tell you how long I spent stressing about this the first time I made this change. All we have to do is clear the XCART cache. So, you know, I mean, that's what it tells us there, you know. But if you, if you don't know, then you'll just sit there and wonder. The best way to do that is just visit cleanup.php. You can do it from the admin side. I mean, we can go, you know, to settings, or maybe it's tools, maintenance, and down here we can clear the templates, xcart slash xcart cache, but cleanup.php is easy as pie, and it's just, you know, your URL, and then you just type cleanup.php, okay. So now, let me check that box, well, it already is checked, let's go ahead and refresh and see if it's really checked. It's not. So let's check it. Apply changes. It's checked and saved as checked. Let's just refresh. I don't trust it. It's checked and saved as checked. Uncheck it. Apply changes. Okay, it's working just fine. Okay, so I am going to leave it checked. And I'm going to note that this is the Acer TravelMate product that I like to play with. Now, what we've done is, you know, we've created a new variable that we've stored in the database, and really we can do whatever we like with that variable on the front end. In this case, you know, we're going to be putting this call for details message up there, 
Um, you know, in other cases, it could just be whatever you know, whatever you like. And we didn't just have to store a checkbox, and we could have stored any string or any integer that you wanted. So, um, okay, enough rambling there. Once again, we're going to go to Content, Edit Templates, and I'm going to pull open a tab with the front side in it. Close some of these other tabs I've got. And I'm going to go to the Acer Travel Mate page, wherever that is. There it is. Okay. Now, in this case, he basically doesn't want any of this information being displayed. Um, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and say that he doesn't want this add to cart or quantity or options. Everything from this options all the way down, including those buttons. Um, he just wants to call for details. Okay. So let's put he or she. Sorry, it's it's a habit to do that. I always assume programmers are are male, and usually they aren't always that the way. So we're going to go back here, and we're going to go to customer. And again, I'm in my skin, so I'm going to edit template skin my skin. Let's go to customer main, and I already have product details. Now, if you didn't have this template in your custom skin, you just go to common files customer main. And click on the template, cop copy its contents, come back here, create the new file. I know I've explained that. I just want to make sure because it's kind of important. Um, and, you know, this is a pretty complicated template. There's the description, lang label description right there. Here's the form, you know, that uh, creates that add to cart button, you know, submit area. Let's see where that starts and stops. Again, I may cut this search out later if it takes me a while. Hmm. There's the label details. There's the SKU. You know, but really, the form starts all the way up here. And I really don't want to present any malformed um, content. But we could just remove the buttons. So I want the form to form to stay. So let's just start taking it out. There's Lang label options. Let's just start right here. There's a there's a nice row to start on. So we'll just say if dollar product dot call for details. Hopefully I'm spelling all this right. Equals Y. Okay. And then we won't close it. We'll go all the way down here. After. All of this jazz. And there's a bunch of closing if statements. That always scares me. This is another place that I may head out looking for. There's the quantity. There's the end of the table. And that's probably where we want to end this. You know, chasing through Oh, look, I misspelled that. Chasing through this a template this complicated takes quite some time. Um, but you can look you know, at this spacing most of the time and figure out if there's anything on the other side of it. So I'm looking down here, and I don't see... That looks like where that if statement ends. I'm just going to kind of take a shot in the dark and, and try it right here. Okay. So yeah, I'm sorry that that's not very clear there. Hmm. Ah, I'm seeing some stuff here. Well, that's that's gonna you know here's the buy now buttons below that. You know, so really I'd have to add my F statement here as well if I wanted to. Let's see what effect this has and see if it causes an error. 
So let's pull this out, refresh, saved it. And, ah, see? <laughs> I put if call for details equals Y, and it does on this product. But, but no, <laughs> I want to say, um, and I'm, I'm going to leave this mistake in just so you all can see it. It's if call for details not equals Y. Save. So that just had no effect because this product is marked, you know, call for details. All right. Well, it looks like it really, you know, locked out a lot of stuff. It took out a, quite a bit there, and I don't think it's caused any errors. If we if we were missing an if statement, you know, we'd see an error. Something like the rest of the page not loading. So, you know, for the benefits of this tutorial, I mean, if I was working on your site, I'd probably work a little bit harder at making this perfect. But I'm going to go ahead and assume that that was good. And I'm going to copy this line right here to take out some more stuff. So, you know, they've got the Buy Now buttons enabled down here. So let's just go ahead and put this around this if statement as well. And it looks like that ends way down here. And we'll just put another slash if right there. So that should take out the add to cart and add to wish list. And you see I did that just right here above uh, if product at appearance by now buttons enables. I basically just put another if statement sandwich in it. And really, it'd be nice if I put this back a bit, um, you know, so that you can tell that they're related to each other by the, the tabination here. Okay, so let's hit save. Let's go to the front. Let's refresh. Let's see if we got rid of our add to cart and add to wish list. We did. So we have everything <coughs> except what we want. And we want to tell them now, call for details. So we have this if ending right here on line 277. And we have it starting here at 209. If product.call for details not equals y. And in this case, I'm going to change that to that was a thinking moment, that pause, to equals y. And then put an else. Okay, so if product call for details equals y, else do this. And if it does, h2. And another thinking moment there, lang dot label call for details. All right. Okay. That should do it. Let's go ahead and hit save. And we'll refresh. So it was saying if it says call for details, well, call for details, else display that stuff. And let's just look at another product that doesn't have call for details checked, which is going to be everything, uh, since, since we just created it and checked it on that one product. And that product is getting everything that it's supposed to get. And uh, this product is getting just what it's supposed to and not what it's, you know, the stuff we didn't want. Okay, so that was that was it. I hope this has been uh, helpful. Sorry it was a little bit rambling, but I think you probably learned quite a lot. And, you know, you can use this for just absolutely anything that you want. Um, and Mike White here signing off, wishing you luck in all your e-commerce efforts. Have a great day.